And so if you have communities with no family structure and kids attracted to gangs, the police in some different form or fashion are going to create a gang to go fight that gang or that gang violence. And you're going to get out of control, lawless police officers who believe the only way they can uh, enforce law and order or peace and order is by becoming just as criminal as the community that they're policing or the gangs within those communities. And so this is again what I'm saying. Tyree Nichols and other people, myself when I was young and growing up in uh, certain zip codes or whatever, mm -hmm. there's collateral damage to these communities. Hopefully it's not as bad as what happened to Tyree Nichols, but anytime you have young people that aren't properly supervised by both parents, you're going to have chaos in that community and that chaos is going to spin out and create really horrible outcomes like what happened to Tyree Nichols. Let me ask you a question. You said um, you said that, you know, you largely subscribe to um, your life is a reflection or, your, you know, previous things in your past is a reflection of you actually subscribing to this Western culture of focusing more on career and things like that. You don't believe that men I, I, focus... Wouldn't, I wouldn't label that as Western culture or whatever. I, maybe it is, but I, I wouldn't put any pejorative or narrative on Western culture. Okay. That's well, just the way in which things are out of place when it comes to how things are supposed to operate within a biblical structure and how we define um, households are supposed to be raised, right? You don't you don't believe that men should more or less focus more on their purpose. Um, and I'm only mining this out based off of what you said, because you said that you were more focused on your career and things like that instead of being focused more on family. What do you, what do you mean by that? I mean that I made a, a lot of decisions uh, in my life, in my 20s and 30s, maybe a little bit in my 40s, uh, that were all career, financial, popularity, uh, chasing success rather mm -hmm. than chasing family structure. God wants men to create families and head those families and be a part of leading a home and leading a community, that wasn't a high priority for me. Hanging out in strip clubs and chasing younger women and doing stuff that, you know, so-called wealthy people with popularity are supposed to do, that was my priority. It was a mistake, a, a big mistake. You don't and think that, see, I disagree with you to an extent. Obviously, I don't have all of the context um, behind what your life was like in, a, in your 20s, 30s, and 40s. But you say create families. Are you saying that as like against the idea of just going out and having a good time? Because when the way you're describing it, you saying that, yo, I was on my purpose. I was focused on my career. I was focused on becoming successful, popularity, all of that other type of stuff. I know it's going to be a lot of things. I needed to be doing that. that in partnership with a, with a wife and kids and leading a family. I, I was very really uh, arrogant and very... Uh, selfish in in my approach but i mean as and, long as you didn't have kids out of wedlock and obviously i don't necessarily agree with the idea of fornicating but that's not what you said you telling me that part, you needed part to of, do that I in tandem with on my raising show. A family? Part, of, part of this is i knocked up a friend of mine and and she well, had see, an abortion addition. without without my knowledge that that's part of been my repentance and regrets and just you know, living a uh, immoral lifestyle Yeah, that I, I caused her pain and myself. We both did, but, you know, I'm the man. Uh, and so, you know, I, I could walk you through a number of just really stupid things I did in retrospect. And I'm telling you, if, if for someone like me that much of my career has been dedicated to trying to expose a level of truth, primarily to black people that I think will liberate them and put them in a better mindset. And, and I left out in my view, the biggest part of that creating my own family 
partnering with a woman and, and doing it together with me as the leader, that wasn't as high a priority as it should have been if I really, really, really wanted to accomplish the mission that I feel like I've been called to, called to do. When did you start coming back to the, like, when did you come to or have that awakening moment or, or that, that red pill moment, so to speak, to where you said, you know what, I'm on the wrong track or um, this is a reality check for me or whatever. Was it like one specific moment or was it like a whole series of situations that then led you to, that led you to this mindset that, you know what, I need to get things together or I need to live more based off of these biblical principles? I, I was raised in the church and and uh, always a believer, but it really wasn't until 2013 when I went back to ESPN for a second time and uh, w was attacked, in my view, in a very unfair way, and I couldn't figure out like where it was coming from, and eventually I figured it out. It was. It was my values because, again, I was living a secular way, but there were things in my writing that exposed, uh, that were consistent with my biblical worldview and values that uh, the left and liberals or whatever just weren't having. And so I was t attacked and smeared in a way that made me figure out, like, I got to get right with God because God's the only defense I, I have. Mm. And and so uh, it was, you know, after I got pushed out at ESPN in 2015, it was crystal clear to me that the only way I was going to survive was uh, to start wearing my uh, biblical values and my Christian beliefs uh, on my sleeve and start living a, a better lifestyle that was more consistent with uh you know what i believe and what i think god uh wants from me and so you know it was, it was at that time and again i had written about my faith and all that stuff previously throughout my career mm -hmm. but i had also written in great detail about my secular lifestyle and uh you know i'd even taken on a nickname that uh given myself a nickname and taken on everybody called me big sexy and, and i've told people that like it's insanity that i'm basically celebrating my gluttony and my lust and i'm having everybody call me by something that celebrates gluttony and lust this is completely out of line with god and so uh it, it's it's you know I, and so I just, I pivoted in 2015 and, uh, you know, that, that's the explanation.